Welcome to Life Happens, where Texans come to protect their legacy and prepare for the second half of life. Join your host, attorney Kim Hegwood of Your Legacy Legal Care and our weekly guest as we navigate the challenges that emerge as life happens. Now here's your host, Kim Hegwood. Good morning and welcome to Life Happens with me, Kim Higwood, and my very special guest today is Tipa Snow. So I'm so excited to have you back on the show. Thanks, and, Kim. Um, and so, and we're going to talk about something that happens to a lot of my clients these days, mm-hmm. and we're going to be talking about dementia personality changes and how to deal with them. Yeah. And because uh, we're finding more and more clients are having parents and grandparents going through all this stuff, so this is hugely. Uh, really important to be talking about today. So let's kind of get started. Yeah. Yeah. So what I, kinds of, uh, I wish it weren't the case, actually, Kim. It'd be so much easier if we didn't have that aspect of dementia. And it's not one we talk that much about because everybody talks about memory. And it's like, if it were just memory, I think we could probably deal with that. This piece is really tough. Yeah. Yeah. It makes it harder. You know, it yeah. makes it harder because, you know, especially for families, you know, that had, um, real sweet parents, you know, and then they got dementia and then they turn into these, you know, these people, they don't even recognize they're angry and defiant. And, you know, it's like they don't recognize the person anymore. So, well, and here's the tricky part because the person living with dementia probably doesn't recognize them as kind and loving family members. They see them as threatening their independence, threatening their, uh, the way they like to do things, threatening and telling me, I don't know what I'm doing, that I need help. And all of a sudden we're, we're at each other like, wow. And unfortunately we can't see each other's perspective either in those moments because it's such a tough place for both of us to be. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the kinds of personality changes that are common that we normally see with someone with dementia. So there's one of three patterns. There typically are three patterns. One, the person is more of who they were. So it's sort of them on steroids. So if I had always been a friendly person and and really enjoy people, now I might be over the top. So when you take me somewhere, it might be, Kim, oh my God, it's so good to see you. Oh, I love your hair and I'm touching and I'm in your space. And I'm like, because other people find me sort of extreme. So whatever I was before, up at times five or 10, and it may only happen occasionally, or it could be my new pattern, which could really off-put people, but it also makes it harder to figure out what the heck. And so we may start thinking that we need to medicate to manage, but unfortunately it's part of the brain change. And if we medicate, we may actually diminish abilities overall. So it's this tricky part of like, mom, you love being with people now, don't you? Um, And recognizing, wow. um, But now if I wasn't the kindest, most gentle person Mm -hmm. and we up the ante, so I've always been a little rigid and inflexible. So I want to know exactly what you're doing with my money. And I want to know why you think you have the right to do that. Because I never signed, I signed that paper. I, I, I'm i fairly certain I did. And so I may just be more of like I was, but it's like, whoa. And I will say that frequently this one gets missed for longer. Because <laughs> you can say, well, she's always <laughs> like that. <laughs> then like that. And it's like, well, not that bad. And it's like, well, how many times not that bad? Like a lot. And it's like, that's not normal aging. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's something else going on. The second one is where we have a reversal, where it really flips. And it seems like the person that I was expecting and I always saw and I knew is not how I'm seeing now. And that could happen for one of two major reasons. Number one, I was always sort of hiding who I was because I thought I should be a certain way. And so I've had men who were always very rigid, very inflexible. They ran everything like a military camp. When they developed dementia, suddenly they were easygoing, friendly. People could do anything. They were It didn't matter. I'd spend money like a drunk sailor. And it's like, where is this coming from? And it's because the rules that I thought I needed to live by, I don't need to live by them anymore. So here I am. This is what I would have been if I didn't have to be a dad and run a company and be in the military and all this. This is who I really was, but I wasn't able to come out because, you know, um, there are rules about being who you were and being successful. On the other hand, we have this reverse, which is I actually 
I look really different and now my dementia has stolen me. And we see that most with frontal temporal dementias where it actually robs me of being able to be the person I was because of the wiring in my brain is now destroyed for the person I was. And you get left with what's left after that destruction happens. So I'm flat. I, I, I'm, I'm not pleasant. I'm sort of, I don't care. I don't know. Leave me alone. And it's like so different than how I was, or I'm angry and frustrated all the time because I can't figure things out. And I don't like that. Um, and I've lost the ability to figure things out. And so I really do have a lot of frustration with everything around me. But then we have our third group. So that, that seemed like that was plenty to keep up with. But then we've got a third group. I mean, and this is the hard part. It's like, this is not like one size fits all, uh -huh. which makes it even harder. And in this one, one of the things that happens is the personality as we've known it is not the same. And it's actually related to the type of dementia that we're seeing. And so it could be paranoia that is coming from my Louis body. It could be uh, anger that is coming from my vascular damage. It could be um, fear, uh, really intense fear that is coming from my balance coordination issues that I'm coming up with. And so it colors my personality a lot. Um, and it's coming directly from some of the changes that are taking place due to my dementia. And um, they can be more prevalent at certain parts of the dementia than other parts. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that's sort of what's happening. And so one of my uh, longtime friends, um, his mom got Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and I would stop in to see her and, and she'd ask the same thing of me over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I kept thinking, you know, I love this woman. She was like my mom, you know, she was so good to me, but I don't know if I could have lived with her. After hour, after hour, after day, after day, after week, after week. Yeah. And it's not for everybody. And I think one of the hardest things for family members to recognize is when that, that characteristic, which is typical of Alzheimer's, because I simply can't hold on to a new memory. No matter how many times I form it, I can't hold on to it. So I'm, I like to socialize. And so I ask you social questions, but then I don't know what the answer is. And so I want to have a conversation. So I'll have the same conversation. Um, and so, yeah, not everybody's meant for this because you have to figure out how to put this in a space, in a place where it's like, I'm trying to memorize the story. I need to memorize the nuance, the, the rhythm. I want to memorize the words because the sad part is they'll come a place in the dementia and the Alzheimer's where I no longer remember the story. And I may say to you that that woman that comes, I need to talk to her about the thing. And it's like, oh, you're needing to talk to Kim about it. Yeah. She's the one with the, she knows a lot of stuff, huh? Yes. Yeah. What's funny is that, you know, up until the, I think to, really up to the last time I, I was able to see her, she still knew who I was. Mm -hmm. She still would ask the same question over and over again, but she knew who I was. And, and one of her daughters told me, she's like, she can't remember friends that I've had forever. Yet you come in and she knows exactly who you are. And I started laughing and I said, what's well, because I'm unforgettable. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and so I'm like, what can I say? You know, and, yeah, uh, I mean, it's the moment where her, her facial recognition of you for some reason really locked in and yeah. it, I mean, who knows what it was? I wish I wish we knew what the formula was because then we could apply it. Yes. Unfortunately, it's it's not magic. It's just moments. Yes. And, so. and that's the hard part. Yeah. yeah. So what do you do? You know, we, we talked about, you know, the parents that are, you know, that are angry, you know, and things like that. And so what are some tips for our listeners, you know, who have these parents that are, you know, now mean and angry and, you know, to maybe redirect or calm them, you know, what, what can you tell our listeners? Yeah. So one of the really important things, if I say you're stealing my money, I know what you're up to. One of the really important things not to get is defensive mm -hmm. and not to say, mom, I'm not stealing your money. Let's not do this. Mom, why would I stay? I mean, don't get into an argument because one of the skills that people living with dementia keep, and I hate saying this, but it's true is back and forth, back and forth, turn taking, which includes arguing. 
Uh-huh. I mean, it includes chit chatting, which is why you have the same conversation over and over again, but it also includes arguing. And so we want to be real tuned into that. So if the person says, you have no right to do that, you want to work on getting really good at turning your body a little bit because you do want to turn. Don't be confrontational. You don't want to be facing them directly. You want to turn your body a little bit. I don't have a right to do that is what you're saying. I shouldn't be doing this this way. And then pause because I'll be the number of times people go, right. Yes. That's what I'm saying. It's like, you're right. I shouldn't have done it without your permission. I am so sorry. I thought I had your permission. Well, you did it. I hear you. I hear you. So I need to make sure I get your permission before I do stuff. Yeah, I'll do better next time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll try to do better next time. I mean, mom, it's really hard for me sometimes because I thought I did. And clearly I didn't. Yeah, um, I must be, be forgetting. <laughs> yeah, I, I swear I thought we said something. But if you're not remembered, it doesn't really matter, does it? Yeah. So that willingness to not be right. <laughs> and when they're really upset, don't try to calm them down. The very worst thing that I have ever seen happen is when somebody says, mom, I need you to calm down. <sighs> don't tell me to calm down. You are not the boss of me. This is what irritates me. You think you know what's, don't tell me what to do. It's like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, don't do that one. That's for sure. I mean, mom, calm down is the worst thing you can say. You want to acknowledge you are really angry. Well, yes, I'm angry. So say the obvious. So if you think that, mom, you look, I mean, you're ticked. You are so ticked off at me right now. Well, yes, because then what you get is an agreement versus an argument. So if you were to say, your shirt is purple. And I would say, my shirt is purple. Huh? Wow. Weird. I thought it was a different color, but purple. Okay. Because what's the, why bother? If I have health care power of attorney already. And we're already doing things. Why do I actually want to have an argument? Do I want to have an argument? No. So learning that art of being okay with somebody who's really angry. And I would also say, you know what, Kim? Maybe you should not be around so much right now. Who could substitute for you? Because sometimes it's you. And I don't mean to be ugly. It's simply (laughs) just like you you were memorable. So is the relationship we had. And I'm still angry because I didn't get what I wanted from like two weeks ago, two months ago. I don't like that I'm here where I'm at doing what I'm doing. And I think you're the boss of it. So what I want is I want someone else to visit mom who's not the boss of it to see what happens with that interaction. Because sometimes we're, unfortunately, our face, our history is triggering the emotional reaction because it feels like you think you know everything. And you think you're the boss of me. And um, it's like every time I see you, it's like, oh, you, you think you're the boss. And it starts up again. And I've had families that basically get somebody to come in for them for a bit. Because every time they came, it would hurt. It would hurt both of them. And it would make the hurt come back. It was like, well, pause. Quit, Quit doing that. And, you know, the first time you meet again, don't do it in the same space you were in before. Consider another space and another situation. Don't go after lunchtime. That's my other rule. Do things in the morning when you have somebody who's really angry and frustrated, unless morning is their most awful time. Because as the day wears on, their chemistry wears out. And if we do things after work, there's a high risk that we're getting at the end of the bucket. And what we're finding is there's nothing left in the bucket for either one of us. And I don't mean to, but I get the look. (sighs) Mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. I'm sure I've never done it, but you know, it's familiar. <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen other people. Do it. Yeah. No, I can appreciate that immensely. Cause I'm sure that, you know, even today that all my kids have given me the look. <laughs> so it's, I have no doubt. That's why I was laughing. I was like, Oh, I'm pretty sure I've already had the look. And, uh, and so for sure. And uh, so, so let's, let's, switch gears a little bit because now we have a, you know, we've got a parent that is, we we technically can't control, 
Mm -hmm. Um, and we're finding a lot of them that don't want to take baths anymore, you Mm -hmm. know? So with the 12 year old grandson, I can take his phone away if he's not taking a bath or the 10 year old or the five year old, but, um, but you know, it's a little harder to do with mom and dad. So what do we do? And they don't care. I mean, death and taxes, the only things I have to do, (laughs) unlike a 12 year old who has to, like you've got parents for a reason until they're, they're 18, unless they let themselves go or something. Um, so this is the tricky part. Uh, and it also often has to do with what we see as valuable and they don't. Oh. So we can't have two different values and think we're going to get to a, a point of, of agreement because then it starts to feel like bossing somebody around. So, hey, mom, I have a great big favor to ask of you. So you're my mom, let's just say. Hey, mom, I have a big favor to ask of you. You have a red shirt that is absolute my favorite. Now, I know you have the blue one on now, but you've got this red one. Would you be, would you be willing? I just love you in it. I mean, you look so good in it. Tell you what, let's go to your room. Let's see if it's in the closet. I don't even know if it's in the closet. Let's go look. Okay, so how have I backed up? Because I've backed up a lot of steps. Is it about bathing right yet? Right. I mean, we're, I'm, I'm not going there yet because I've got, if she won't change her shirt for me, I can guarantee she's not going to go in the bathroom and take a shower or take a bath. That's not going to happen. So I'm t- I start with the idea of baby bites. And can I get her to do me a favor? Would she do something for me as my mom? I really love you in that color. Hey, mom, we're going to go out. Um, and it's, well, it's sort of eh, outside. I would love you in a bright color. Come and look and see what's in the closet. You know, so the whole idea is let's back away from that intimate hygiene stuff, which is often where it is, or take your medicine, or I need you to go to the doctor, or I need you. And a statement is I'm bossing you. And that's not how we think of it, but the other person is thinking of it that way. So it's like, I have a big favor to ask of you. I know you'd prefer to stay here. The doctor is really wanting to see you. Um, And if I had my druthers, I'd tell him no. But the fact of the matter is, if we don't go, because he said he needs to see you, um, and it's either at 10 this morning, or he's going to send somebody out. Because he's feeling like he really needs to get you seen. So he said he could do it this morning, or he has an opening like this afternoon, which would you rather do? Cause you know, you tend to be a morning person, but he said he had an afternoon slot. And then do your part, which is, I really don't want to go. I know, I know, but it's like, we have to pay $275 if we don't go. <laughs> I mean, the honest thing is they charge you whether you go or not. And I know you don't really care, but that's a lot of money. And he still needs to see you. So we're going to have to set up another appointment. I mean, I hate it because he's all over it. Do you want to, why don't you go and tell him that you don't want to see him again? I mean, you can tell him that. Why don't we go in and you tell him you don't want to see him again? You know, tell you what, you don't want to do a shower. I hear you. How about just hitting the high spots then? Just the high spots and we'll be done with it for right now. Just give it a try. See if it works. Because we're going to be going out. And I know you, oh, you just took a shower. Okay, well, how about we try? And then if it doesn't work, then make a fist. I'm going to tell you, you have to be willing to let it go in that moment. Because if you push harder in that moment, you're actually making it harder because she'll remember that she didn't like the interaction. And this is hard. We've got to be more willing to let go quicker when it's not working right away and then come back to it and say, hey, oh, hey, Kim, like you've got something like, I don't know, here, right here on your face. Feel right here. You feel it? Like, check it out. I mean, there, you've got something like it's right here on your cheek, on this cheek. Just feel it with your fingers. See. Now, how did I get you to do it? And so you kept, yeah. you know, you basically kept doing it until I did it. <laughs> so. Yeah, and I did I touch you at all? No. Did no. I make you do it? It was more of mimicking, you know, because you you're watching and you're you're seeing the thing. So it's more of mimicking. Yeah. And it's something I don't know. I want you to experience something that makes you want to do something. Tell you what, let's go in the bathroom. You've got a mirror in there. 
because you're not, it feels like there's something there. But let's go see. And now I've got you in the place where things happen. I say, well, tell you what, why don't you go to the bathroom while you're here? I need to go. You go first, I'll go second um, kind of thing. So it's not like I'm making you go to the bathroom and say, oh, here, see if you can't, like you've got something. Ooh, this shirt has something on the back of it. Crap. Okay, tell you what, I've got this other, this other one. How about this one? And maybe all we do is switch clothes. But what does it mean if I get you to take off something and put on something? At least got one step ahead. <laughs> I've moved in. I've moved forward one step. And so think about it like a baseball game. Sometimes you're not going to hit a home run. I'm looking at, can I get to first base? And if I get to first base, could I maybe get, you know, and sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, I'll hit and sometimes it's an out and I get three outs and I just take a break. But sometimes I can get people all around the bases a little bit at a time. And if you think of it more like a baseball game where you're not going to hit very many home runs, you know, that day's over. So how can I get you around the bases? So having said that, mm -hmm. what are a couple of tips that um, our listeners can can use to, to try to communicate better? Because I know that that's always yeah. the hardest part of, um, yes. you know, because you're tired and you're tired of moms, you know, at you and, you know, you're tired of everything being a confrontation, yeah. you know, because it's what it feels like a lot of times. So one of the most important things is before you, when somebody asks you something or says something, it's very tempting to answer or to respond immediately. And one of the things I find that's very helpful for family members and staff, whether it's a family member or somebody you're professionally trying to help, I'll go, you'll say something. So think of something to say to me. I don't understand why I have to live here. Yeah. I don't understand why I have to live here. Oh, now what was my very first thing? Oh, mm -hmm. so I gave myself a pause and I gave you a pause. O is an interjection. It's mm -hmm. ah, oh, wow, whoa, huh. It gives us both that pause. So it, it says to the other person, what you said was sort of interesting, surprising, different, huh? So you would rather not live here if you had your druthers. Yeah. So I'm curious, if you got a chance, would you rather be in this area or totally move out of this area? So rather than say, mom, we talked about this. <laughs> I don't want to have this conversation anymore. I know you'd rather not be here. Or you say, mom, this is a really nice place. Any of those things that I might think about doing what I have to do first is pause and reflect and then think about an either or option. How can I make this an either or rather than a yes, no? So, hey, mom, do you want something to drink is a yes, no. And then she says no. And I say, well, you need to stay hydrated. The nurses are saying you're not drinking very much. Well, they don't know anything. I drank a lot. I mean, there we go again. And instead, hey, mom, I'm going to get something to drink. Would you rather have something hot or cold? Yeah. So I've tricked you into picking something rather than arguing with me. Uh -huh. And if she says, I'm not really thirsty, well, tell you what, come with me because I'm going to go get something. And I'm going to get some decaf coffee. You know me. I love the decaf. You're more, you like your coffee with caffeine, right? Tell you what. Let's see what they got down there. If you don't want it, that's fine. But let's go. So what we're doing is moving out of where we are. Because if I get you to see something new, move, it could be that your brain loosens up a little bit. And when you get down there and I hand you a cup, I say, now, do you want the, do you want the ca caffeinated or decaf? I handed you the cup. So what do you already have in your hand? <laughs> yeah, you already have the cup. Now I guess it's just, you know, it's a different decision is what it sounds like. You know, you, yeah. you're forcing different decisions. And so, um, yeah. so and that's good. Yeah. And it's because we know that people living with dementia, as a rule, if you ask yes, no questions, 70% of the time, they'll say no to maintain status quo. Because uh -huh. when I say yes, it means I'm willing to change or do something or you're the boss. When I say no, nothing changes. Yeah. That's so good. Don't ask yes, no's. 
I was like, that may work with the kids. <laughs> it does actually. It works a whole lot better with kids. You know, it's about time. It's about time for lunch. Um, well, you're going to wash your hands first, or are you going to go pick up stuff first? Yeah. This or that. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> and so I was like, wow, who can I use that on today? So yeah. I have a whole team practice. here in the office, practice. and so I'll have to think about that one. I, I'll well, have to start yeah, the more practicing. you practice, the better you get, you know, and and then it becomes uh, instead of having to use your brain to do it, you use your cerebellum, which is your little brain. Oh. The more you move into cerebellum, you don't have to think about what you're doing. Yeah. It just comes out of your mouth without thinking. And that's healthier for all of us. Yeah. And easier. <laughs> so definitely. So Tifa, you know, if somebody wants to find you, tell them how they do that. Yeah. We're at www.tipasnow.com just my name with no space, or you can call us. Um, there's all kinds of possibilities of how you can catch up with it. And I have an assistant who keeps up with my life. Her name is Polly. So Polly L at tipasnow.com. She's a wonderful resource and a great friend. Perfect. And so those are always good to have. And thanks so much for being on the show again. I appreciate it immensely. Absolutely. And thank you for what you do because the need is higher than ever. Unfortunately, yes. And so, all right, take care. You have, you have a great rest of your day. You too. Thanks so much, Kim. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Life Happens with Kim Hegwood. Be sure to tune in every Thursday at 10 a.m. wherever you listen to your podcast as we navigate through the challenges that emerge as life happens. The content of this podcast does not establish an attorney-client relationship or constitute attorney-client privilege, legal, medical, financial, or any other professional advice.